Good morning, dear friends. It is my joy again to be with you for a few minutes this morning as we hear the voice of God through His Word. As we meditate just a few minutes before we, uh, we uh, begin our day's activities and appointments and other things. But meanwhile, we may live in the consciousness of His presence and what we heard today. And I greet you all in the name of Jesus. And God bless you with this anointing. Um, today's meditation also is based on 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. This meditation is in continuation of our meditation on uh, Thursday, last Thursday, uh, based on 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Let me read it for you to refresh your memory. Uh, verse 18 of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 says, For to those who are perishing, the message of the cross is a foolishness. But to us who are being saved, it is God's power. And that is the message. That is the meditation we are going to uh, do this morning. And um, our last, uh, in our last meditation, uh, we close the meditation by or with the remark that God made the cross as a symbol of the greatest religious faith on earth. That's where we closed. A means of reconciliation between God and man uh, through God's love and forgiveness. At first, we looked at the cross and saw it as a place of utter humiliation and, uh, uh, and shame, a place of curse and uh, cruelty and darkness. And uh, since Christ died on the cross and rose again from the dead, It is uh, seen as a place of uh, a revelation of a divine grace freely given to anyone who chooses to come to Jesus and believe in him. It's a, a revelation of a divine grace and uh, it is a revelation of uh, a mercy in its uh, um, uh, in its uh, biggest manifestation. And uh, this can be experienced by anyone who choose to come to Jesus and believe in him. As the one and only Savior who can give you any light to see where your dying breath can lead you as you walk through the valley of death. The cross, the only place where the sin burden rolled away from anyone who come to the foot of the cross and acknowledge him as our sin bearer. And the cross is the world's biggest altar. And that is something very wonderful for you to understand. And uh, an altar where I laid my own sacrifice, <clears throat> my own life, where I am crucified with Christ. Millions of souls ever since Christ died and rose again from the dead, came to this altar. It is a long, long altar and came out free from sin and uh, their curses and went forth with a new song of freedom, freedom from the slavery of a sin and its curses. The cross where I find the greatest freedom through that total surrender where I make my confession. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. 
the cross where I first saw the light bursting forth upon me through the thickest darkness of condemnation. From here, I begin my life. A new life and a glorious life. A life of certainty and assurance of forgiveness. I begin a walk forward which leads me into the light from the golden lampstand in the presence of God. And I am no longer in darkness where the world of darkness of sin is crucified to me and I, a child of darkness and curses and guilt, am crucified to the world. And therefore, I no longer live. No wonder the Apostle Paul said, I glory in the cross of Christ. I have nothing to boast about. And if there is one thing I boast about, it is the cross and cross alone. And that is a great testimony of the great apostle. I have no, Apostle Paul said, I have no other message but Christ and him crucified. And my friends, that is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. And others who are perishing, they don't see any light. They don't see any glory in the cross. They only see shame and uh, fear and, and curses. But Christ, by going to that cross, as the Bible says, anyone who hang on a, on a, on a, on a tree is cursed. And Jesus chose to go to that tree of the Calvary's cross and hung there and became a curse for us. And all the curses of sin that was upon me was transferred to the body of Jesus Christ. And he therefore became my deliverer, my savior, in whom I find my freedom. As he removed the curse from me, and he suffered the condemnation and then he overcame victoriously. He came out of the grave, defeating Satan, his temptation, his curse, Satan who is the instigator of sin and all the curses attached to it. Now I am free in Jesus Christ and for this freedom, he has set me free from sin, curses, and guilt. And now I belong to God. And that is why the Bible says, Don't you know, my brothers, that you, are not, you don't belong to yourself and that I don't belong to myself? We have been purchased with a price. And what was that price? That price was sent from heaven. Jesus Christ, his body and his blood. His body was broken, his blood was shed, that we may find freedom in his suffering. And then he did not remain in the grave. He came out victoriously, triumphing over all the darkness and powers of evil and uh, all the curses and guilt, thus setting me on a higher ground, the ground of the grace and mercy of God. And that is why Jesus alone is the Savior, because he alone understood our human need, the greatest need was the problem or the pandemic or the virus of sin. There is no 
vaccine available in this world against this virus of sin. Only the blood of Jesus Christ and the living Savior is ready to hear your prayers for mercy and forgiveness. And he is ready to welcome you. His both arms are outstretched to accept you and welcome you into God's freedom and his kingdom. You surrender yourself to Christ. In the light of this revelation, let those who are set free from sin should never be ashamed of the cross of Jesus Christ. On the other hand, let your message be Christ and Him crucified. And you will thus be a witness for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this message. I pray that my brothers and sisters who have listened to this will understand their responsibility now to carry this light, this glorious light of the gospel of Christ and go into a world of darkness where people are groping in that darkness, that they may find deliverance and freedom and be free. Amen. The Lord bless you, my friends. The day is good, and as you look forward to your life during this day, enjoy it by the grace of God. And you look out for opportunities to share this news with somebody who does not know. God bless you. Amen.